Awesome. So awesome. how is it? Amazing. Did our workshops. Everyone was very excited. And yeah. There's a lot of people, a lot of interest. Yeah. Schools for was... our omnibus, right? uh, we, had, we had 30 laptops in the room and there was 100 people standing, right? So oh, wow. It was, wow. It was awesome. Good. That's a good problem. Yeah. Just do that around the clock. Yeah. That's amazing. So did you did you guys get to watch the uh, presentation from Jensen and others? Yeah. And what was what was the general uh, sense of feedback from the show floor there? Well, we watched it with ourselves. We watched it in the lab. So we were all really excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So so tell me, so what, what are you guys doing there this week? So we had three labs. We had one around UI, one around scene manipulators and one around um, what was the other one? Layout. Yeah. And then um, now we're just talking to a bunch of people. So there's universities that want to do stuff with us and uh, different companies are looking to do things. And then we're getting a few demos from some hardware makers over the next few days that really want to do some stuff with Omniverse. And so awesome. a lot of connections and just talking to people about tooling, right? <laughs> cool. That's amazing. That's awesome. And any, any takeaways from like uh, any particular kind of industry or, or segment that you saw a lot of people coming from, or is it just all over? It's remarkably all over. Yeah. yeah. Construction, movies, uh, gaming industry, uh, visualization defense stuff, industry. defense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, there's Jen's over there. Yeah. Jen's over here. Sorry. Right. I don't know where she went. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. That is so awesome. I'm so glad you uh, you got to call in, uh, and this is a perfect way to start this show. So so thank you, um, Ashley. Really appreciate it. Uh, Got to go to a meeting, but we wanted to say hi. Yeah, thanks so much. Awesome. <laughs> thanks for thank popping you. in. Have cool. fun. Awesome. So we are live on YouTube now. I got it to work. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. So wizard. It's a little bit delayed if you go back and forth, but it is working. Okay. Um, oh, that's okay. awesome. So, <laughs> so that's we'll great. Well, started. Yeah. <laughs> that is why Wendy is the queen of the stream. So everybody should know this uh, because it, behind the scenes, when, Wendy looks, always looks very calm and collected on our stream. Uh, but <laughs> she is doing a lot, actually. Every time someone shares a screen or playing a video or dealing with audio issues, she's there doing it, changing the, the template. So hats off to you, Wendy, for, for solving that problem in mid-flight. Um, and uh, big thanks to the team. At, uh, so, you see, so let's talk about Seagraph. Um, yes. So uh, as Wendy just said, we have a very special guest here, Richard Karras. Um, and a, a lot of stuff was talked about today, um, stuff which is currently available now, some stuff which is coming and in development. Um, but uh, a lot of, um, I heard of a, lot of a lot of excitement from the community as different things were being announced. Um, um, before we start with Richard, one quick thing. So the, the, the plan for today, we're going to talk to Richard about Seagraph announcements, but then we're going to uh, talk to, to Maddie about some USD content. We're going to uh, talk about the developer contest, which is in progress right now. Um, so developers has to have time to make an extension and, and win a great prize. Uh, and then we'll talk about the winners of the most recent contest, Made in Machinima. Uh, we have a, uh, and we have some videos to play all throughout. We'll announce our next ambassador, our third one. Uh, so it's going to be a, a jam-packed show. Um, <laughs> we'll probably go a little bit over today. Uh, we want, But most importantly, we would like you to interrupt us the whole time. Interrupt us as Absolutely. much as you like. <laughs> Ask questions, post it, say, hey, could you clarify that? I'll, I'll, you'll see my head going back and forth while the, the, the really brilliant people here are talking and we'll, uh, and I'll, I'll try to get, try to get your questions answered. Um, so anyway, thanks again for, uh, for joining us today. Um, Richard, um, how would you, uh, uh, introduce yourself, uh, to the, to the crowd here who maybe have not have seen you before? Um, well, I head up our developer ecosystems here at NVIDIA, uh, and uh, that focuses a lot on Omniverse and also our DevRels and working with our ISV partners and things. Um, been a long time, you know, uh, attendee at SIGGRAPH, so it's kind of weird to not be there physically this year, but I've been so connected virtually and doing a lot of things and watching the team's reports come in have been exciting. Um, you know, my, my first SIGGRAPH was 1985, just to set some real context context um and uh wow has the industry evolved and come a long way since then i mean you know we talked today about omniverse and new features for audio to face and the machinima updates and things like that 
Um, I got to say, I think the neural graphics stuff was the most mind blowing of all. I mean, Absolutely. you know, SIGGRAPH is always a place where you go to kind of take your brain on a vacation and see what's possible and see, you know, what's coming down the road and you get to peer into the future. And NVIDIA, we've always been great at like, here's what you can do today, but here's what's coming. And watching this stuff with neural graphics and how much it's going to both help democratize the creation of 3D for what we all term as the, you know, the metaverse or the next generation of the web, really, about the interconnected virtual worlds. These worlds need tons of content and environments and stuff. And the more that we can do from our researchers to help streamline that and make it easier to, to make amazing content uh, quickly and easily, the better mm -hmm. these worlds will be populated. And uh, neural graphics is, is spearheading some amazing things from taking images to create 3D objects to doing some just incredible things with visuals. Um, I know we have some videos on that. So one of the things I'd love to do is just kind of jump right in. If we could show you the, the neural uh, graphics video that we have, I think, uh, you know, sit back and fasten your seatbelt. It's a, it's a wild ride. So Wendy, do you have that queued up? Yeah. Is that in the folder, Edmar? <laughs> oh, the neural one? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Okay, um, I think it's on the PowerPoint. I'm sorry. Let me. No worries. Oh. So while you're getting that, some of the other things that we announced as new connectors, you know, the whole thing about Omniverse as a platform is how developers can connect to it with existing applications and stuff. So our, our traditional partners are making the ecosystem even more enriched by bringing their applications to the environment. But new developers or developers that are developing new things on Omniverse are, are adding extensions, uh, connections, looking at building their own apps and things like that. And as Edmar said, there's a there's actually a contest going on right now for extensions to, to build. And we've got all sorts of cool ones that have been coming in for that. So I, I invite you to check that out. Um, but did I vamp long enough for you to queue up that yes, video there? Yes, so all right. I have three videos yeah, here. Um, go, go to slide 10, actually. That one has, 10? yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was, we're trying to avoid just hitting the PowerPoint. We just want to yeah. hit Yeah, we had a bunch of slides ready, but, you know. Ah, who wants PowerPoint? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did notice that this video is on YouTube now as well. Oh, yeah. That's Look at that. That is real. <laughs> that's not, that's not GG. <laughs> oh, that's real. Now I'm getting hungry. Yeah, the the neural VDB where you're seeing some of the, the water and the smoke and fire. Neural v VDB is one of the new announcements. And it's a way of using AI to uh, lighten the memory footprint um, of large uh, uh, particle uh, data sets. And it's just amazing. It's you know, up to a hundred times reduction. So you can have gigantic simulations running in real time. Yeah, an amazing thing for those of us that have been around a while, stuff like that would have taken days, weeks, huge amounts of investment in hardware to get rendered in the past. So if you go back and look at some of the older films that some of our partners like ILM have done with Perfect Storm and the water and scenes like that, and think about how much it took then, and now we're doing it, you know, a lot of this stuff in real time. And uh, wow, has the industry evolved quickly. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm sharing, uh, I'm sharing my screen with uh, a list of the announcements um, that we are discussed today in the presentation that Jensen and others shared. Um, so we can kind of go through those really quick. Um, we kind of did cover a couple more just now. Oh, yeah, okay, still playing. Is there is there audio? Are we talking over there music right now? Or, oh. Yeah, but we're just talking over it. We're being yeah, it's <laughs> See you in Omniverse. It's interactive and it's real. It's live, folks. <laughs> it's uh, live. Yeah. It's live. The okay, audio too. <laughs> awesome. So, Edmar, you were saying you just shared oh, yeah. so all the I'm minutes. sharing my screen now. Uh, so for anyone on our forums, uh, you probably know that we have a really cool announcement area where we kind of post all the latest updates, whether it's news videos, upcoming live streams, tutorials. Um, so we did post uh, just a, a few minutes ago before the live stream, we posted uh, a recap of all the announcements so you can kind of see everything all in one place. So that's uh, what I'm showing on my screen right now. Um, so obviously, uh, the big one, uh, one of the big ones was Omniverse Kit. Uh, big improvements for uh, SDG, as it's known, or synthetic data generation. 
um, uh, audio to face. Uh, we saw uh, Simon uh, talk about um, uh, audio to face uh, changes uh, right. and updates. Yeah, the audio to emotion and really yeah. cool thing. Yeah, audio to emotion um, was added in audio to face and then also Machinima because Machinima is including them in there. And um, it, it's a really neat feature that allows you to, to dial in emotion um, mixed in with your character who's talking, so you can talk angrily and all that. But also, it uses the tone of the audio you provide to actually auto-generate that emotion. And so if the, the tone goes from angry to happy, it mixes that in, and uh, it's it's creating keyframes for you. You can always go and mix it and change it. Uh, but it's really neat to see, um, you know, that that uh, not just the lips moving, but actually getting you know more more feeling into it. Pretty neat. Yeah, and we'll 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 talk about this a little bit more when we talk about the uh, Made in Machinima contest. But you know, the yeah. feedback we got from a lot of the contestants and the winners uh, was that they were really uh, could they could not believe how much was possible just with one person. And mm -hmm. um, and I think so. What we're we're seeing now is a lot more creative content come out there from all different voices uh, that just weren't able to have a, 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 a easy ability to kind of um, uh, put stuff out there to the world. Um, so I think this is is really improving the accessibility of, of technology to folks to make these kind of experiences. So that's really exciting. Um, and then we have let me see, scroll down a little bit. We've got some connectors that are in beta release, right? Including a, a crowd favorite, uh, Houdini. Houdini, yeah, we have a. We have a bunch of videos out as well. If you go into your launcher and you go into the learn tab and you go down into uh, the uh, tutorials by product, you'll see a Houdini section in there now. And I think we have three three new new videos there. Yeah, Houdini's right. been asked for for such a long time. It's really great to see it <laughs> as a as a beta connector. Um, and then, uh, and then we also have some stuff, which is, uh, so we really like to share with the community, um, uh, what we're working on so that they kind of see what to expect. Um, but also we do it so we can get feedback from people and it really helps to prioritize, um, some of the stuff we incorporate into these, uh, new features. Um, uh, so anyway, so along those lines, uh, we announced something really cool called ACE, uh, avatar cloud engine. Um, so it's it's a collection of uh, cloud-based AI models and services for developers to easily build, customize, and deploy engaging interactive avatars. So that I, I, I saw a lot of people uh, were like, oh my God, this is awesome. Um, yeah, to be able to have access to that in the I'm cloud. Add a little bit to that because I think it's it's important as we look at how these, you know, the, the metaverse will evolve and all of these worlds and what we'll do in them and how we'll interact with them. The, the role of avatars is gonna be extremely important. There's gonna be millions, if not billions of avatars out there, avatars to help you, guide you, work alongside you, all different types of things. And so what's great about this ACE technology, the frame kit is you're really being given the building blocks to go out and create your own. And that's what we're working towards because we believe that there will be avatar use cases in so many different areas, ones we haven't even thought of yet that we can provide the toolkit and framework for those building blocks and people are gonna be able to do and get productive right out of the gate with it. So it's really one of those those announcements that you, you see is coming and then before you know it, it's gonna be just affected everywhere. So very excited about that one. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and another, oh, go ahead, Vincent. I was gonna say, it, like, it brings together so many technologies, right? And you, we've, we provide all these SDKs for things like facial animation and, speech and, and uh, uh, you know, the uh, body animation gestures, all these different things as kind of uh, different parts, uh, which is great if you're, you know, a creator and an artist and, and all that and can, or a developer to integrate, putting all these things together into an, an easier to use kind of uh, cloud service really kind of opens it up to not just computer, you know, graphics developers, but but anyone to use. It's, it's really amazing to see the, the <laughs> you know, make, making it easy to use. Yeah, it's great. I mean, speaking of bringing it all together, another uh, another often repeated term today was USD. Um, yeah. And we've been talking a lot about that uh, in the world. Uh, the industry has, has really, um, I think, uh, you almost universally adopted this as kind of like the uh, the, the standard. Um, so we'll uh, so we have a lot of cool information on that coming up, including what was talked about today was a USD compatibility test and certification suite. Um, so what can we share about this? This is basically a way for people to uh, to uh, to subscribe for some testing services. Um, yeah. So 
I'll, I'll go into more of the USD announcements uh, in a little bit, but yeah, that one is is basically we want to provide. Uh, we're not going to build that metaverse by ourselves, and so we're contributing tools to help other companies verify that their applications and uh, and their data is is USD compatible and and will will play well with with others. So that's that's the gist of it. And Very it, cool. Really, you know. USD is so significant for where we're headed with the metaverse. And, you know, we can't, you know, get, we got to stress the importance of everybody working together on this. And that's why taking this position of helping and working with, with other companies is so critical to the success of bringing these worlds together. You know, we don't think about it today when we go from website to website, you know, whether whatever device, whatever browser, but in the early days, it was what extensions loaded, what kind of browser doesn't work with that. You got to go get Flash, got all this other stuff. And it was not a seamless experience. All that went away once HTML made it to a level where everybody adopted it and it could provide consistent video, consistent imagery, et cetera. You had the underlying plumbing that seamlessly connected websites, no matter what they were, whether it was commerce or whether it was data, whether it was research, et cetera, all the websites just gave you what they needed to give you. And then you were focused on the content there. USD is like the HTML of 3D and having that connective tissue to connect these virtual worlds means that we'll be able to teleport from world to world without having to reconstruct the entire thing and, and you know, load different things. Um, so it's critically important that all these companies more every day that are working to really unify around USD and advance it in much the same way HTML advanced year after year and get it to the point where it's a seamless connection between virtual worlds then the magic starts to happen. So we're investing heavily in it, as are a lot of other companies. And so these tools to help companies validate and, and ensure that they're compatible is really critical. And so um, as we'll talk more about it in a bit, I, I just wanna stress the importance of why USD is something you'll hear over and over from us, and you'll hear it from other companies. It's on billions of devices that are out there. And uh, you know, just so you understand the importance of it, it is the HTML of 3D. Um, it's, it's, it's super exciting. I think we're going to have an upcoming live stream specifically focused on USD also. I think Rev will be joining us along with others in the team to talk about what we're doing um, in that space even more detail. Um, Omni Live. That was another thing that was talked about today in development. Yeah, Omni, Omni Live is an evolution on uh, LiveSync. So it's mm -hmm. kind of built on, on, the, on, a, on a new framework, um, which, which some have might have heard about Omni Objects and uh, and it's more to more than that. So it's a it's a new way that we're going to be able to live sync different applications together, uh, and be able to even invite people into joining your session. Uh, it's a really really great evolution on on the already amazing functionality of of live sync. You know, being able to have a nucleus server that has your scene assets, that has your USD, being able to leverage those layers in USD and have different people in different applications connected to those working collaboratively. So it's that next version, that next iteration of, of, uh, of our live sync just brought to an even, uh, you know, even easier uh, level of, of, of use, right? It's gonna be uh, amazing. I, it, th that's one of those things, if you haven't experienced um, collaborating with someone on, on Nucleus, uh, I strongly recommend it. <laughs> Um, try it if you have two computers, you know, connect together, install your own little nucleus server, connect your two machines to it. It's just magic. Like that, that thing you get when you play Minecraft for the first time and you're building stuff together, yeah. you get that. But with all of the apps that you use every day, right? With your Macs and Maya and Houdini and everything, it's just amazing what it, what it allows you to do. And, uh, it's been, it's been really nice being able to very quickly, even with colleagues, just, mm. hey, let's jump in. Like, it's already kind of that metaverse feel. We're able to jump into a USD scene and work on it together. And so Omni Live, super excited about that. Can't wait to to to, to see those connections and connectivity connectivity between people uh, just yeah. uh, becoming so easy to use. Yeah, it's it's definitely a new connecting to a nuclear server is definitely very game-like. You see uh, somebody else working in the same place, but all all the barriers are, are removed, right? There's no game yeah. rules that are that are keeping you from doing anything it's all 3d usd anything you want yeah it's awesome yeah 
And speaking of the connections, uh, in addition to the ones that we announced were available, uh, we, uh, we announced what is in progress and in development and some amazing, amazing connectors on that list there. Uh, of, um, many of them have been actually uh, really by popular demand, I think. Um, Hi, Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <He's been> forever. <laughs> yeah. 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 That for a long, long time. So happy yeah. to see that coming. Um, yeah, all of them that are they're underway, they all come from the requests that we get from communities like this. You know, we are listening all the time. So, you know, if you're looking for something or you, you need it or something, just let us know. Um, if you want it really bad, let us know a few times <laughs> and, and we listen and it, it slowly makes its way through the system. And as you see, there's ones here that I don't think there's a, one on that list that hasn't been asked for by our community. You know, yeah. all of them I'm looking at. You know, from Maxon Redshift and Blender yeah. and, you know. Alias, I, I know auto manufacturers you use that a lot still. Yep, yep. I see a lot of Siemens, some heavy hitters in there too. Yeah, very nice. So lots, lots of great things to look forward to. Um, and then obviously we already talked about Neural VDB earlier. Um, uh, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, well, there's, you know, definitely go watch the uh, keynote if you haven't. There's tons of really great uh, demonstrations. And, and, you know, what I alluded to earlier, the fact that, that these great papers, you know, a lot of those things we're going to start bringing in and, and making available uh, inside Omniverse. Uh, so we have, a, a, you know, an AI toy box. We, we did, uh, Gan, uh, what was it, Ganverse, I think we had, the one, the, the car. That was kind of our first uh, little baby steps of bringing some cool research paper in as a, as a, as a test, as a demo tool. And uh, we're going to be doing more of those. So we're going to be converting some of those cool papers into uh, and bringing those tools uh, at least into the experimental branches and to uh, the, the Omniverse for individuals so people can try around with them. And I think one of the two things we announced along with Neural VDB was the Kaolin uh, Wisp. Uh, so for those who don't aren't familiar with Kaolin, uh, it's another app you can download, uh, which is in, in the, the launcher. And we took uh, some of our SDKs uh, for uh, for for um, neural graphics and 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 had them uh, in there so that you can um, review your data sets if you're training uh, AIs using uh, for three D models. There's a bunch of functionality in there. Wisp brings in the the uh, the neural field uh, the NERF uh, technology. So I'm really excited to play around with that. You know, you can have a couple images of something and it it builds basically sort of like a point cloud and can recreate uh, the missing data. And, and uh, it's a really neat uh, technology, really interesting to see how quickly we can go from paper to something that you can just load and click on, right? Uh, it's gonna be, you know, that's the whole point of Omniverse, right? It's an open platform that you can take and develop and build and and all of that foundation's there for you. So we're, we're drinking our own Kool-Aid and taking our research papers and putting them in there too. And I'll plug the uh, contest again going on for our extension uh, developers out there for Omniverse. If you're not aware of it, please check the website. I will put the link in something here. Um, yeah. Watching some of the things that are coming in are incredible. Just simple tools that people make that you do stuff every day. So there's a bunch of those and there's more complex ones. But I love the way people are looking at it as, you know, there's so many ways that you can interact with the platform and extensions are a way that you can just really customize and make things your your very own or make things that you're solving problems and workflows and share it with others and so we really want to do what we can to continue that that community to just build on itself that's the whole idea yeah yep and uh so we mentioned uh watch the keynote the other thing that uh has come out is a flood of blog posts about all of those things that were talked about as well uh with more details than what was shown in the videos as well. So yeah, right. check out the ILM, the one we did with ILM and their use of deep search. That's yeah. uh, really, really cool. Uh, for those that don't know, deep search is an AI driven way to search files on your system by the content. So the example that they have is, you know, they have 20 plus years and tens of thousands of skies and backdrops and things like that. And, you know, when a director comes in and says they want to see something, they'll use director speak uh, on a dark and gloomy afternoon with a sunset or whatever. And somebody has to go find that. And traditionally, that'd be based on the metadata and looking and finding, how about these? No, I want that. You know. Now they can just, using deep search and Omniverse, just 
put in director speak. I want the dark, gloomy sky. And it automatically uses AI to come bring those things up. Uh, it's yeah. incredible. And it's going to change the game on how you get stuff done, especially when you have just huge archives of content to go through. Awesome. So we talk more about USD. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Maddie? Well, yeah. let's 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 do one more plug for uh, for what we have another event happening tomorrow um, called the Art of Collaboration, Collaboration, Nvidia Omniverse and GTC. So this is our documentary we were playing uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, and it will be rebroadcast tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so in this documentary, you can go behind the scenes of 2022 Spring GTC and discover how all the Nvidia teams, creative, engineering, and research. Uh, pushed everything to the limits uh, with NVIDIA's GPUs, AI, and USD to deliver the most watched U GTC ever. So that's going to uh, be tomorrow as part of CGRAPH. You do not need to be registered for CGRAPH to uh, to watch it. Uh, same as the presentation earlier today with Jensen. Um, so it's open to everybody. Um, so we'll, we'll post that on the Discord. Uh, so if you miss anything here, chat with us on the Discord afterwards. Just um, uh, we're, we're hanging out there pretty much uh, all day and night. Uh, so feel free to come in and say hi. Um, it's got the most badass drone opening of anything that I've ever seen. So if just the, the, the talent to bring all of this stuff together, you'll see we open with a drone shot, but not just any kind of drone shot, and it's mixed with CG and stuff like that. I highly recommend it. And then, of course, all the other content with Sing 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 and stuff. So a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Awesome. All right, so let's let let us dive into the next topic, which is USD. And Maddie's here. Uh, Maddie, who everybody knows on our Discord and on the forums, has been instrumental in helping uh, developers ramp up uh, with Omniverse. Um, and uh, thank you, Maddie, for for being such a valuable part of the community team. Um, uh, what would you like to tell us today? So Edmar gave me ten minutes to talk, and uh, I'm going to fill it all with USD. Um, awesome. I'm super excited. Uh, what, what we announced is that um, USD is, is our best candidate for uh, 3D standard. Um, a big part of NVIDIA's special address today had to do with uh, universal scene description. It's an open source scene description originally developed by Pixar with APIs for creating, editing, querying, rendering, collaborating, and simulating in virtual worlds. Uh, Rev today told us that USD will be essential to 3D worlds as HTML is for the 2D web. We heard Richard repeat it here. Um, it's, its features are for team for teamwork are exactly what, what's needed for collaboration and for the social aspects of the metaverse. And its standardization for interchange is exactly what's needed to stitch the open metaverse together. Uh, USD is one of the core technologies of NVIDIA Omniverse. Uh, we use it in a variety of applications today, and we're pushing the limits of USD with our real-time and collaborative workflows in NVIDIA Omniverse. And over the years, NVIDIA has invested in USD and contributed back to the USD community with, uh, we've provided USD binary so that you don't need to build USD yourself. Uh, USD view in, in, in the Omniverse launcher is available now. We have assets that you can take a look at to learn about how assets should be structured and, and what USD assets look like, test them in your applications. And we have on-demand tutorials and documentation about USD. And so if you're looking to learn more about USD, usd.nvidia.com is, is a great place to start. And while NVIDIA has already invested a lot into USD, today NVIDIA shared that we're doubling down on USD and continuing to invest in, in, in this technology uh, that will power the open metaverse. Uh, this timeline shows NVIDIA contributions in the last couple of years and where we plan to continue to invest in years to come. So some no notable contributions that we have planned for the near future is the GLTF plugin. This will let you bring in GLTF data. Uh, you won't mess around with the source GLTF data and you can then uh, continue to layer it in, uh, do um, non-destructive editing, uh, all while uh, you don't need to translate the, the GLTF. It, it just brings it in on the fly. Um, we're going to be doing UTF-8 support for international character sets. Uh, this is worldwide technology. It should support multiple languages. Um, we want to support geospatial coordinates. We want to have 
uh, digital earth, uh, digital twin of the earth. So absolutely required. Uh, USD running in the browser, real time proceduralism, the compatibility testing suite that we mentioned, mm -hmm. high speed updates, and real time streaming of uh, for Internet of Things. So like that that mentioning of HTML, right? We're at we're at HTML one or or two, and we're going towards five, right? We're yeah uh, with an open standard and everyone you know everyone out there on board. It's it's really nice to see the the uh, uh, the wave, everyone kind of getting in on it and, and participating and and uh, extending uh, these schemas and and uh, yeah, it's great. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, there was a question in the chat about uh, is USD going to work the same in all of my DCCs right now? It doesn't. Um, that's something that that we're we're working towards, right? Is um, with the compatibility testing suite, uh, we're we're going to be working with others with the DCCs. Uh, and, and other companies to make sure that uh, we understand what, what feature sets are, are supported in, in each application and, and wherever you go um, and trying to reach that peak of maximum uh, compatibility in every application. There's a lot of workflows that involve many different applications from CAD to you know Max, Maya, all sorts of engineering products. And, and in a lot of cases, um, some of those special features in an app didn't translate to the other apps as well. So, uh, you know, USD is actually the the best interchange I've ran into in my twenty plus years in in, in graphics uh, to be able to to make that connection between the apps. Right? If you're if you're just in one app from beginning to end, uh, that, you know, it doesn't make a huge difference. But in a lot of pipelines, you're mixing different applications, and that compatibility has always been a massive uh, headache. And so yeah. um, it's it's really nice to see uh, not only being able to do it, but being able to do it all live while you're still in the app connected. It's just it's just mind blowing. Yep. And uh, you bring up a good point: is that um, every application may not support everything of USD all the time, um, right? You, you you may not want hair sim in your CAD program. Um, so understanding which apps that support what um, is going to be and communicating that to users is going to be key as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the USDA ecosystem continues to rapidly grow. More and more companies are adopting, uh, but not only adopting, uh, they're contributing back to USD and helping it grow. So lo looking forward to the years to come where um, we continue to see that ecosystem grow as well. Absolutely. I'll let Richard. Talk on this if you want. <laughs> oh, I, I, you hit all the key points and the the relevance and importance of it. I think I touched on just so everybody knows why we're we're so gung ho and as are the other companies. Because once you have the common foundation, all the other things become available. The seamless connectivity and all of that stuff that we talked about. That's why it's mm -hmm. so important. Yeah, big part is uh, you know the other one of the other announcements was around MDL. And how um, you know, we open source the MDL schema already for the material definition language for materials uh, at in at SIGGRAPH 2018, and now we announce also open sourcing the distiller uh, and also GLSL backend technologies. And the distiller is um, you know when you're you're dealing with a physically based material, it can be extremely complex. These very very complex shaders for doing reflection, refraction, all these different uh, things, subsurface scattering. And um, the end product may not support all of that complex math. And so the distiller is a way of kind of simplifying that complex material down to, to whatever level you need for whatever engine you're going, whether it's a phone with a very simple you know, OpenGL or, or Vulkan. Um, so uh, the, by open sourcing that distiller, it makes it easy for anyone else who wants to kind of get in onto uh, using USD and these complex scenes that, that we want to make universal to be able to kind of bring down what they're able to support, uh, even at, at a very low level, uh, if they don't support complex physics, math on, you know, shaders and stuff. So really neat to, to contribute. Again, you know, we, we create these technologies, but we're, we're, we're giving back and open sourcing these, uh, these tools um, to, to help everyone be able to, to uh, get on board and use USD. Cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I want to get to the sneak peek. Uh, yeah. Rev shared this uh, video in the special address, and I 
love it and want to see it again. So, <laughs> hi, Wendy, can you hook us up? Yeah. Let me see here. Should we talk over this one too or let it play by itself? <laughs> I always yeah, like the mystery stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Approach. Dirk does a nice uh, commentary on it, so I like I like to hear Dirk. Universal Scene Description enables the exchange of 3D graphics information. NVIDIA is enhancing USD to support extremely large and complex digital twins. Everything from sprawling factories to global scale climate change. Digital twins need to operate in full design fidelity at real time speed. Yeah, in the meantime, there is another question. Uh, high speed devices. incremental update. Uh, Here are the ways that can NVIDIA we is extending oh, USD to scale to the scene complexity of digital twins. The source USD is compiled into Fabric, a GPU accelerated, deeply vectorized data representation for real time updates shown here in Drive Sim. Just in time optimizations like mesh merging and material distillation reduce scene complexity while preserving visual fidelity and can be applied at load time without modifying the source data. This is crucial for making a ground truth representation of a digital twin available to both a supercomputer like OVX as well as a general consumer grade device. Let's take a look at an example that shows the performance of a digital twin in USD. This virtual factory dataset from the Lotus SD digital factory team contains millions of prims in USD. With Nvidia's just-in-time scene optimizers, the first pixels for this dataset appear in just a few seconds. These optimizers can be configured to device requirements on the fly. Without the optimizers, the dataset takes minutes to load, plays back at 7 FPS, and can exhaust GPU resources on lower-end systems. Let's take a closer look at the optimization process. In traditional USD rendering pipelines, Hydra copies the USD data into GPU buffers as is. This is where optimizers come in. We can load the entire scene headlessly into system RAM, and then merge meshes, distill materials, and stream geometry to the renderer. In this case, geometry streaming prioritizes the draw order based on camera heuristics such as solid angle. With these just-in-time optimizations, we achieve a 10 times speed up in load time and a 10 times speed up in playback frame rate. This is just the beginning for where we can take just-in-time scene optimizations. Future work could include out-of-core scene optimization to relax system RAM requirements and much more. USD is the ground truth for digital twins, scalable to any level of available computing power. we're back <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> we, should, we should also mention to to folks watching that the reason why sometimes we started talking over when the videos play we don't see them so we either yeah, have a set up with it yeah. playing but we don't hear it either so yeah, it's, we it's played it on the playing. server yeah <laughs> yeah so we're, we're not in that same environment as you all so that's why you you, you probably hear a little uh, confusion and stuff like is it playing i look over the second screen it's playing can't hear anything can i so i say something <laughs> so that's why. it's all live folks <laughs> that was a great video though yeah 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 so that that is part of uh, the answer about what is the high speed incremental updates is, is we're, we're doing all sorts of optimizations on usd to be able to get that real-time playback um usd was not built for that and even though we do a lot of it in, in Omniverse today, um, there's a, a big push to uh, speed that up even further. Um, so yeah, super excited about that. That's some magic going on there. Uh, and an amazing team by amazing work by the development team. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, did you want to, uh, give a quick final plug for the extend Omniverse contest? Oh yeah. 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 Let me share one more time here. Amazing gifts and prizes are being collected for the winners. Yeah, before we get to the winners, we do have this uh, the contest that's going on right now um, that, that Richard also mentioned. Uh, you can search hashtag extend Omniverse. Uh, you'll find the, the contest page and a bunch of other information about it. Um, this is an awesome opportunity to just dive into Omniverse. Uh, if you've never worked with USD, get your feet wet with with uh, developing with USD 
and um, build something, maybe win a graphics card. Um, so it closes August 19th. And if you need any help or anything, uh, we're on the forums, we're on Discord, and uh, really looking forward to what everyone builds. Uh, even if you don't want to enter the contest, it's still a great way to learn how to program and how to how to create stuff. Lots of great content was created for the for this contest. Great tutorials, uh, great samples, lots and lots of stuff. It's a great great way to get started. In fact, they're covering a lot of uh, what you learn uh, in, in this um, at SIGGRAPH on the in, in those labs. So, uh, yeah, lots of resources there for you, and also some past live streams. We go through a lot of great content. Absolutely. And so we do have a dedicated channel on our Discord server specifically for contest related questions. We also have different channels for other areas, whether you're just developing a connector or an app, uh, or you want to learn about warp. Um, we have a whole bunch of channels for our different topics and verticals. So definitely come to our Discord. As Wendy knows, the other great place to go is the forum. Uh, we have an extensive forum, and that's really where you should go if you have any bugs or technical difficulties, because uh, our forum is very much integrated with our own development uh, here. So we have a ticketing system and we can track things where we can't really track things uh, so nicely on Discord. Um, but Discord is a great place to come, meet other users, hang out, show off your stuff, get feedback. Um, and our developers do hang out there. Um, so uh, so it's a great place to come uh, as well. So that is easy to get to, discord.gg slash NVIDIA Omniverse. We're going to head to the community voice chat after the stream's over. If you want to come and, and chat with us and ask any questions, we didn't get to answer. Um, Yes, yeah, so that is a, also, so the, the, the current contest uh, uh, is in process. We just wrapped up the last contest, uh, Made in Machinima, where uh, users uh, were given a challenge to basically incorporate one of the sample assets we provided from several other, several uh, publishers, game publishers. And you can use your own assets and different stuff also, and make it just a, a short that's under, under a couple minutes long, I think. Um, we got dozens of entries, uh, really fantastic stuff, very different. Like every contest, we can never expect the kind of uh, kind of content we'll get uh, in terms of submissions. It's very creative, uh, something you would just we can't we can't predict this stuff and it, it's it's very inspiring. Wendy uh, has said it many times, I have too, that uh, our contests are, are huge motivators internally uh, with the development team. We see what people are working on. It gets us incredibly excited. It drives us. Uh, uh, so so that's one of the reasons why why we do these so regularly. Uh, so that being said, uh, we, we had a difficult time picking the winners. Um, uh, and we just announced this a little bit earlier in, in the NVIDIA Studio page, but we're going to go with the winners in more detail now. Uh, but it is, uh, it's always a big challenge. Um, and I think the judges really looked at uh, some of the technical challenges that people faced uh, and had to overcome or how they basically went about uh, from a more technical level on their, on their submission. Um, so we have, uh, we have Simon, uh, who won first place, Nicholas, who won uh, second, Ted, who won third. We're going to play a reel in a second, so you'll see these. And we have a bunch of honorable mentions, um, uh, Mike, Wilson, Stephen, Hua Jing, and, uh, and Benny D uh, uh, from Nigeria. We did uh, several submissions, all of which were fantastic. Um, so I want to thank everybody for entering the contest. Uh, really fantastic. We're putting all this stuff on the Omniverse gallery page. Um, and just as a side note, whenever you're making stuff in Omniverse, we would love to see it and, and share it with the world and promote you and the work you're doing. So that's why we set up the Omniverse gallery page. I know Greer on our team would love, love to go through your submissions and, and, uh, and let the marketing team uh, and writers know we got someone hot we need to share. Uh, so definitely uh, use that web page uh, to the fullest and share your work. Um, so why don't we actually, so this video is, uh, to Rich's point a minute ago, this video is about six minutes long because what we did is we incorporated, so we, we talked to the winners, um, again, Simon Levitt, Nicholas Lotz, Ted Segindel. Uh, we talked to them uh, recently about sharing their experience with Omniverse and uh, as it related to this contest, uh, what kind of went into their video. So they were all awesome and gave us some great stuff to, to share with you all. So we're going to play that, uh, play that video. And at the end of this video, you're going to see the winning entries uh, in, in full. So you get the, the full glory of it. So <laughs> this is about six minutes long. Um, Wendy, uh, this is, you got it? I, okay. I'm we'll start the video. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I'm all not right. going to talk. Enjoy, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so me and my team, we entered the Omniverse Machinima competition. This Machinima contest was an incredibly fun experience for me. 
it was really exciting to see what's possible with the software and you know what you can do just with a laptop and a webcam. It's just amazing to see what you can do with 3D tools like the Omniverse. The, the graphics you can create are just mind blowing. We made several characters in 3D and 2D and we tried to animate them and to see what's possible and how easy it is. Growing up playing video games, I was, I was probably more fascinated with cutscenes that you uh, see in between the gameplay, but now you can create them yourself. It's, it's fascinating. You know, this is just a small step in the future, but I think we're really looking forward what's coming and what's possible in the future on such a laptop. And to think this is just the beginning for the Omniverse, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Men, this mission must not fail. The target arrives in T-minus 60 minutes, so there is no room for mistakes. We know how important this is for us to succeed, so I need every one of you to be on high alert. Sir, it's just a cake, right? I mean, we're just baking a cake. It's not an ambush or rescue mission or anything like that. Yes, Private. We have T-minus 60 minutes to complete this mission. The cake mission. Just making sure. You sound like we're going into battle or something. And you're all geared up for combat with the sunglasses and all. Sarge, we're out of eggs. Dang nabbit! Didn't we go shopping yesterday? Contact CQ! Have him tech with the neighbors for a few eggs. This fence post one. Sarge says to go get some eggs across the street. Roger that. Hello, neighbor. We were wondering if you have some eggs. You need eggs? Yes, eggs. Tell him. We'll bring them right over. We'll bring them over. We have T minus 59 minutes to complete this mission. You need eggs?
Beyond the majesty of the astronaut painting, what makes this masterpiece so special is the larger story it contains. The unique painter of the galaxy is with us at the Omniverse Museum. Please welcome the creative genius. <laughs> We're back, guys. Wow. <laughs> that was incredible. And you, you know what, what's uh, what's funny about this is that some of them are very funny, right? It's very hard to incorporate humor, but some of the winning entries definitely uh, went all in on the humor. Um, and that was really uh, that was really great to see. But obviously, uh, congratulations, hats off to all all the contestants. Like I said, you're all winners. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see what you create next in the Omniverse using uh, other tools and using Omniverse to bring it all together. Uh, really exciting for us to see. So, uh, so congrats to all the winners. Um, and speaking of, of winners and humor, um, we have uh, um, a, a couple times actually, we've, we've had an opportunity to work with Marcom 3 d who's been producing some hilarious uh, animated shorts with Omniverse. And not only that, but actually showing, sharing his workflow. Um, but Wendy, uh, was that not one of the funniest live streams we've had with absolutely. somebody? <laughs> absolutely. He is awesome. <laughs> He's great. He woke up at like 3.30 in the morning to because uh, he didn't want to change the time of our live stream. Um, and just really fantastic. So all of our live streams are up on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a playlist for live streams. We also have them all up on NVIDIA On Demand. Um, uh, NVIDIA On Demand follows a little bit after the YouTube channel, but everything's there eventually. Uh, for territories that uh, can't get YouTube. Um, we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, engaging with the community is, is, uh, is, Wendy and I are probably the luckiest people at NVIDIA to be able to do this every day. Uh, and I have to tell you, you have probably one of the best advocates uh, for your work in Wendy. Um, <laughs> behind the scenes, she pushes a lot of buttons to get answers uh, to questions that you guys have. Um, <laughs> yep. And she does not mess around. So nobody, uh, nobody here takes anything she requests very lightly. So, uh, so make sure you do report stuff to us and let us know what you're looking for so that we can help. Um, I mentioned the Omniverse uh, gallery page earlier uh, and Marco. Uh, so Marco has a recent uh, highlight there. Uh, so it's, it's called our Meet the Omnivore blog, um, where you could read about different um, people using Omniverse in very creative ways. Let me see if I could share my screen really quick so you guys can see it. Um, but basically what we do is when we find uh, someone in the community doing something interesting with the Omniverse, doesn't matter what it is, uh, uh, but if it's compelling, uh, we'll try to like reach out right away and, uh, we'll ask a few questions and build a really interesting story, uh, your story, uh, that we can share, uh, with the world. So it's called our Meet the Omnivore. Um, and you can go through, uh, uh many of them here. Uh, are online and archived. Uh, but Marcom was a really great one to have, and he actually just produced this really fantastic short. Uh, and Wendy, this is video, uh, but if you want to learn more about him, I was going to say, you want to uh, definitely go to um, go to the Media Omnivore blog to read about him. Um, but here is a great short that he did. Uh, this is video number five, Wendy. Okay, so here we go. So our main focus is health and safety. Yeah. That is our number one priority. Here, this is a state-of-the-art place. We're the mm. biggest organization here in Australia, if not the world. And our number one goal is safety. Yeah. We want to make sure everything's tip-top. Anyone hurt? Not. Sweet. See? Safety is our number okay. one priority. Yeah, right. But yeah, someone will clean this up. That's great. Anyone hurt? So <laughs> let's now go through the process from start to finish on how we created this animated he is, short film. It's so it funny started... on the uh, on the live stream. I think we talked about the warehouse scene at some point, and he said, "I, I want to take this thing apart." And he wasted no time 
He actually was working with one of uh, one of the developers on our team, Dave Tyner, and they're going to do more collaborative efforts. So, so we're going to showcase that and how two people can actually work together, in different parts of the world. To be able to, and that's one of the powers of, of using Omniverse and and USD, of course. So, um, so that Markcom 3D has a great YouTube channel where he shows his workflow. Uh, so definitely subscribe, uh, check out his Meet the Onward blog to read more. Um, another yeah, really talented. Ooh, sorry. Yeah, where if anyone wants to play with it, you have it already, right? Install your own little Nucleus server locally, go into the uh, NVIDIA folder, demos, and you'll find uh, the warehouse physics. And there's actually a nine series video around it that teaches you kind of how to how to set up physics uh, in, in that environment. So, uh, you know, knock yourself out, load it up, play around with it. Or <laughs> knock the work. Oh. Or knock, <laughs> yeah, knock the workers out. No, no one was hurt, though, so safety right. is... It, it, it worked. Okay. They're all safe. Yeah. Um, another, another really brilliant mind uh, using Omniverse. Um, and actually, uh, he at, right now, he's at Seagraph uh, at the Asus booth uh, showing off Autodesk and Omniverse workflow. Uh, he's been on our live stream a few times. Uh, we're going to play a demo reel from him in a second of just work that he's done in Omniverse. But uh, I'm, of course, speaking of Ed Studios, otherwise known as Ed McEvenue. Um, he is, uh, he's just, uh, a shining star for Omniverse cause he's not only is he doing a lot of amazing, fantastic, beautiful commercial work for companies like Ecopy Smart Thermostat or, or Dell. Um, he's actually uh, sharing his workflows along the way with the world at large. So you can actually learn how he does this stuff. And believe it or not, when you see this reel, uh, this was done by one person, uh, using Omniverse. And, and the other thing, which is quite amazing, uh, is that he's done this with no support from us in terms of special technical support or or us trying to make something work for him. He has uh, basically, sometimes we, we discover these people that are using Omniverse in really amazing ways. And they're just, uh, uh, they're just one person shows really. Uh, um, UAD is another good example of, of developers who have taken advantage of Omniverse with little support from us at all. Uh, but done amazing things with it. Um, so why don't we uh, why don't we watch his demo reel, and I'll tell you what's in store for Ed soon. Um, so that is uh, video six. Here we go. So that is amazing. I, uh, I imagine Marcom 3D would have a lot of fun with those uh, assets if he got a hold of them. Um, but uh, it's because of the great work Ed, uh, Edward is doing and his workflows that he's sharing with the, uh, with the world and the community uh, that we're very happy to announce that, uh, that Edward is our third Omniverse ambassador from the community. Um, which is uh, a very special thing. Uh, we, uh, we obviously are always looking for people who, uh, who demonstrate that they have an expertise in one or more areas of Omniverse, but more importantly, that they're sharing it with others uh, and, and helping to share that knowledge. And Edward is doing that in spades. Um, and we're very happy, like I said, right now he's at Seagraph. So, um, so we'll, we're gonna do a future live stream with him to catch up with him. Um, and, but be on the lookout for more great stuff from Edward. And Edward, thank you so much for all your support with the community and for, uh, for and congratulations on the, the amazing work you're doing, the commercial work you're doing with Omniverse. It's a really great example for others on how they could utilize the platform uh, for their business. So, um, so I'm gonna play a quick clip now. This is number seven. This is, uh, this is basically a highlight of different moments we've had with Edward so you can get a sense of his personality. <laughs> So Edward is the founder of Ed Studios. Started more in like claymation and like playing with Legos. And you know, I had to actually build the sets and I actually had to build the characters. In 3D, I'm like, I could have a scene with all these mountains and trees. I didn't have to build it anymore. And then comes Omniverse, which was a game changer for me because that was something that was much closer 
to the original workflow which I grew up in. I only started using Omniverse in January of this year. I was, you know, seeing that you guys had announced beta thing, I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. And I saw a few videos and, you know, some of the graphics looked like something right out of a Pixar film. This is some of the work I've done just to distract the industry from using like Redshift and like V-Ray and just kind of creating these kind of like cool visuals. Maybe. But they're always just cool visuals, right? I'm like, this, I had a whole plan to turn this into like an animated thing. I don't know, but just that ability through the code is possible. Like, there's no limitations that Omniverse puts in place in order to limit that kind of functionality. Seeing this stuff rendered in real time, that iterative process is beautiful. Uh, I'm probably giving just the full notes. There's, there's lots of things in between. But... This is awesome. <laughs> I love this video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like a ranked off sim. We also pass this around internally. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Wendy. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye. So that bar, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> and Edmar and I are going to go there someday. <laughs> I can't wait. He did invite us. We're going to we're going to hold him to that. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and so anyone who happens to be at Seagraph, definitely stop by the ACES booth uh, where you can get uh, to meet Edward firsthand. You can get to watch his presentation on Autodesk and Omniverse Workflow um, and tell him we sent you uh, and, uh, and he'll be very happy, uh, happy to see you. So um, that almost, oh, go ahead, Evans. Uh, huge congratulations. I mean, it's, it's been amazing to see the, the work just out of nowhere, just started posting these cool videos of, of things he was doing and, um, really pushing the envelope using the 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 wheat field the particle systems for animating wheat growing like really really pushing the envelope uh just blowing away the the engineering team with with what he's been doing so you know big congrats and we know there's more like him out there so please let us let us know what you're up to let us know what you like uh share your stuff and we'll uh, do the best to support you and share things back it's totally true. And uh, Vince is not not kidding. Whenever Edward uh, has released a video on his YouTube channel, Ed Studios, uh, we share it internally and our minds are blown We're like, wow. <laughs> so it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's like I said before, it really motivates us. So definitely um, get in touch if you want to share your stuff or submit it to the Omniverse Gallery page is the best way to do it. We do have a showcase there in the forums and on Discord, but that's more for feedback from the community. When you want to show it off to the world, put it on the Omniverse Gallery page uh, and you'll have the full force of the marketing team behind you. And perhaps you'll be selected for a Meet the Omniverse blog. So um, a link to the gallery in the news tab. If you run your, your launcher in the news tab, the first one that pops up, there's a big banner at the top for the submission gallery. Easy to find. That's a great point, actually. So really quick, we're about to wrap up the show. We're going to hang out in the Community Voice channel for anyone who, who has a few minutes, wants to come say hi. Um, but Vince, so say somebody stumbled here from Seagraph. They didn't really know about Omniverse before. Uh, yeah. They saw something about a live stream happening. They checked it out. And now they're like, all right, well, how do I get in? Where do I learn how to use this stuff? You guys convince me. Yep. You can, you can just Google search for NVIDIA Omniverse. You'll find a link to our page. Uh, there is a free version you can download today. It has all the functionality, uh, and uh, you have a uh, a bunch of applications. You essentially download a launcher, something very familiar to most of you. If you're using Adobe products or even Autodesk products, you'll have a little launcher tool. And then from there, you can decide to install applications and launch applications and even have different versions. And so we bring to you all of our news in the news tab. So all these great blogs that have just gone out for SIGGRAPH is going to be right there on that first page of that launcher. Uh, so on that news tab, you'll have aggregated all of our developer blogs and corporate blogs, as well as the banner to the uh, to uh, to the submissions for for the gallery, and and uh, other news as well. So you have a news tab. You have a place to launch your applications from. You've got our exchange where you can go and download and find new applications. Create is kind of probably the best part of spot to start. Right, create is kind of our most full featured application. Uh, and you'll see in there view and machinima and uh, audio to face all of those applications are in there as well um, and then uh, once you get you have a nucleus server you'll want to install your own little nucleus server that's how we maintain connectivity between applications so if you're a blender user or max or maya or any of those things we have connectors for huge amount 
of, of products out there. You can install a connector in your DCC app. It'll connect to your Nucleus server, and that will give you a connection also to the apps that we build. So basically, Nucleus is where your USD file uh, resides. So that connector is really a way to get USDs out of your DCC app, and also in a lot of apps to, to put a live connection there so that you can have Max and Maya and Blender all communicating and, and, and syncing. So you know, just connecting apps together through Nucleus and then add our tools on top if you want our cool animation and, and, and uh, neural graphics and all this, this amazing stuff. Uh, and then most importantly, the Learn tab. So if you don't know where to start, go to the Learn tab. Uh, you're going to find links to our documentation, to our tutorials, to your developer resource center if you're a developer. And uh, you'll find sections in that Learn tab uh, for all of the different uh, videos um, that we have available for all the different applications. So download the launcher, and that's all you need. You know, that's your that's your launch pad. Just start from there, and that that's your that's your springboard into into the Omniverse. And those requirements are right on the web web page. You could, the easiest way to get to it uh, yeah. is uh, omniverse.nvidia.com, I believe. We'll go there. Um, the other uh, the other a really cool thing coming up if you really want to dive into things even further. Uh, is GTC, which is happening uh, literally in, in about a month or so. Um, so that uh, also is very easy to get to. NVIDIA.com forward slash GTC uh, will bring you to the uh, registration page. It is free. Um, and right now we have a t ton of people here working on their presentations uh, and, uh, and the workflow videos to show off. Uh, we're looking forward to, t to seeing you all there and having um, uh, having the ability to answer your questions. Um, so that uh, that is just uh, coming up around the corner. So that is uh, probably the, the next best thing you should register for, especially because it's free, um, and you get to uh, get to uh, get to hang out virtually with uh, some of the greatest minds here we have on the team. Um, so I think that just about wraps it up for this very special live stream. Um, I can't thank Richard and Vince for coming enough. Um, and Richard, since do you, do you have any like closing parting wisdom, uh, for those upcoming omnivores? Uh, definitely stay tuned for what's happening towards GTC. Uh, the stuff that you're seeing this week is a, uh, kind of like an appetizer to some really big things that are underway. Um, but most importantly, hearing from you, the community. We love to see what you're doing, what you're developing. We love to hear what you want from us and to understand what things we need to deliver for you to do your jobs better and such. So uh, we're always listening. Um, I guess the words of wisdom are keep it coming. You know, let's grow this community <laughs> <Yeah>. together. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you, Maddie, for, for joining us and sharing the wisdom on USD and Vincent for all the, all the knowledge spread throughout. Uh, so we're going to uh, bid goodbye on the, the stream, but we're not going to say goodbye uh, for long because we're going to jump right to the community voice channel. Richard, I think, has another meeting, but we'll, uh, everyone else will be yeah. there. Uh, so come, come hang out with us. T un unmute your mic. Uh, turn on your webcam if you like, and uh, and let's hang out a little while longer. Uh, for everyone out at Seagraph, uh, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the other other sessions in the lab. Say hi to Paul and his team. Say hi to Edward. And yep. uh, Wendy and I will see you here uh, Wednesday uh, next week. Um, uh, we think we think we're going to go over USD and uh, what we're doing with MDL. So um, uh, we'll put a post announcement on Discord shortly. Uh, <laughs> thanks everybody so much for joining us. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you. See you. Bye.